have students. Whoa. Welcome. <laughs> what the heck is up with you? Let's try it again. What? Right from the get. I said that, welcome. That, that, and I saw that took me off. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hey, CF students. Let's go, let's go. It's another Friday, and now we have another new person with us. Come so on. you know we got to tell you who we are. My name is Jess. My name is Holy. And my name is Gabe, and I get to serve as one of the directors here. And this is your first time. We want to thank you and welcome you. As a matter of fact, wherever you are, let's get up for our first time, guys. Come on. Put it in the chat. Boom, boom, boom. Clapping hands. Let's go, let's go, let's go. If it's your first time, we want to thank you. Welcome. And the other thing we want to do is connect with you. And the best way we get to connect with you is going to our website, cfmiami.org slash connect. As a matter of fact, it's literally right down below. So make sure you go to that website, fill out that connection card. We want to make sure that you feel loved not only by us, but we also want to connect with you, make sure that you're updated about everything that we have going on. As a matter of fact, we got something going on. Yes, we, got we do. Something. We got something going on. Let's Next week. I don't think Talk you guys are ready. Listen, February 18th. We got sports night happening. Oof. Let's go. Come, Come on, on, let's go. Let's, let's, where's the sports pose? Wait, wait, wait. Sports, sports pose. pose. Sports, sports pose. pose. Let's go. My football. <laughs> I'm like, were you trying to do a back I'm like, the, the Odell. The Odell. Oh, no, the boy. Yeah, yeah, the o boy. <laughs> now, is that like your favorite like athlete? Not really. I, I just thought it was cool. But anyways, oh, we got boy. sports night happening, guys. <laughs> I want you guys to all come out and have a great okay. time. I'll be there. That's right. All of us are going to have a fantastic yep. time. I don't know if we're going to be playing football at night. But we'll see what happens. <laughs> I, I love it how you called it football because you're the proper soccer player person. You're like, Oof. football. Football. Foot, football. Yeah, look it up. <laughs> That's what it is. Anyways, no doubt. What we got going on today? Oof. Mm. What we got going on today is very special. As a matter of fact, man, we got our very own Pastor Lewis bringing on week two of this series called Justice for All. So if you want, Pause this video, go and make sure you watch the last video for week one. But if not, man, Pastor Lewis is going to be talking about how we can find hope in the midst of social injustice, right? There's hope in Christ when we are approaching, when we are dealing with injustice. So I'm really, really excited, not just for us, but for you, for you to listen, to consume the Word of God, and to meditate and apply these truths in your life. Jessica, what else do we got today? Man, I was taking a little bit of back there. You went with the government <laughs> name. But legit, like, before we get to that message and before we get to the rest of our service, we got to talk about giving. That's we get right. to give That's right. here at Students. And we say that specifically, we get to give. Because honestly, let me tell you something. Students, God doesn't need us. He don't need you. But he gives us the blessing to be a part of the work that he is doing all throughout Miami and honestly throughout the world right. through the ministry like CF students. Um, from Splash Bash to Sports Night to our regular physical services and online to rallies to all this stuff that we are able to do. We're only able to do that because of your giving. And honestly, we get to do that because of your giving. God allows us to do that. And don't let that moment pass you by. Act in obedience and understand that there is just so much blessing in giving and the blessing that we're able to be in so many people's lives in our community um, just through your giving. And you can do that very simply. It's very easy. All you have to do is go to cfmiami.org slash give and you can give that way. No amount is too little. Uh, no amount is too much. Man, actually, the more it would be, be even better. <laughs> better. You can even <laughs> imagine. But honestly, don't let the amount that, you know, dissuade you. Give. You know, God, it doesn't matter how much, just give. Be obedient, give, and be a part of what's happening here at Students and what's, what God is doing all throughout South Florida, That's man. That's right. Because of students. Now, before we get to our message, because we like to have fun here at CF Students and here online, we're going to play a little game with you all. You ready? I'm ready. You ready? I I'm think ready. Holy is like, you know, super competitive. He's I'm like, ready. you. Let's do this. Am I going to be part of this game too? or? <laughs> I don't know because you, you kind of, your, your, your win-loss record's a little rough. But we'll, <laughs> we'll let you play too. But the name of the game is called Last Word. All right, so here's the rules of the game. A player from each team will come up front. So here are our players. We have Holy and Nodal. And a category will show on the screen. 
Whichever player gets an answer out first starts and players alternate saying answers in the category until one player can't think of any more or says a wrong answer. First team to, we're gonna go to five points, wins. So, be nice. Remember we both love, well, we both, we all love Jesus. So here we go. Here's the first word. Cereals. Uh, Cocoa Puffs. Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Uh, Cheerios. Frosted Flakes. Uh. Nope, Gabe's got it. Holy got stuck. Boy, light. Boy, you, man, holy. Let me hand that to you. I feel, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> All right, let's have the next one. Oh my goodness. States. Florida. Arkansas. Michigan. New York. Oklahoma. Is that a state? Uh, Oregon. Idaho. Uh, North Carolina. South Carolina. <laughs> That's not even Tennessee. Fair. California. Oh. Connor! Come on! Oh, no, Come on! <laughs> no! Oh, oh my goodness! He's like, I had the my next one like, ready. Like, oh. <laughs> All right, that one goes to I'm no not doubt. from here, guys. Only you got <laughs> this. You got this next one. I, I promise, I'm you got this it. next one. Give us the next one. Disney movies. Oh, oh no! Frozen. Oh my I think goodness! It's no. I <laughs> Holy said, "Oh no!" <laughs> I think it's a Disney movie. Okay, you said Frozen. Holy. Uh, I don't know any Disney movies. <laughs> Bro, oh no. my goodness! Don't oh tell no! Me any I don't know anything. What is Disney? Who's your favorite princess? Prince. You, have a <laughs> you have a favorite Batman. princess? Batman. <laughs> Batman. Right. This man said Batman. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Fast food restaurants. Oh, you must know this. Come on. <laughs> I know We're working every day. Wendy's. McDonald's. Burger King. Chick-fil-A. Ooh, okay, okay. Uh, you my Chick-fil-A. Puerto Tropical. Uh-huh. Oh, shoot. I, was, I thought you were going to go. Oh, yeah. Holy's on the board. Let's go. All right, so that's two to one. Wait, is Checkers one? Checkers, checkers is, is fast one. Food. But it's you didn't late. say no it's Checkers. Yeah, it's too late. All right, be writing in the chat, students. Who do you think is going to win this? Holy may come back. All right, next one. <laughs> birds. Parrot. No, nah, that's a genre of birds. You got to go specific. Oh, it is? Okay, a vulture. A vulture? Okay, better. Uh, a pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Flamingo. No, you took too long. What? Holy, you're good. Oh, what? The a hawk, a hawk. That's a bird. You're good. Holy, you got the point. You took too long. Oh. <laughs> We're tied. Two this to guy's two. Two to two. <laughs> We're tied. Two to two. We're tied. Don't argue. Bro. Just this is it. the last one. Here's a tiebreaker. <laughs> Man, Jess, you got something against me. <laughs> car, car, models. <laughs> car models. Car models. Porsche. Honda. Toyota. Nissan. I'm gonna. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause you guys. It's models, so um, not brands. Oh. Yeah, not brands. Shoot. It's okay. models. Toyota Corolla. Okay. There you go. Uh, Nissan, Ultima. Toyota Camry. Honda. Toyota, Toyota Charis. Ford. Truck. <laughs> no one said. Four hundred fifty. No. Four hundred fifty. Four hundred fifty. Bro, they're probably like clowning me right on the chat. They're clowning me right now. Okay. Uh. Or you know. Porsche 911. Lamborghini Colorado. Woo! Uh, Porsche Carrera. That's not a that's not yes. a thing. Yes, it is. Ferrari Spider. Come on. <laughs> Bugatti. <laughs> okay, Bugatti what though? Bugatti what? Bugatti Varion. Bugatti Varion. Yo, these guys know their cars. On the Odyssey, my truck, 1978. <laughs> my car parked right outside. It's oh right outside. Uh, what's your what's my car? Honda Civic? As you said that? On the same yeah. Dodge Durango. Holy cow. Uh, Mercedes C-Class. Toyota Sequoia. Howdy A7. Nissan Altima. He said that! He said that before! Okay, uh, Honda. No, you lost. <laughs> How did I, I can't repeat. <laughs> Holy is the winner That's of the our last word. <laughs> Competition. <laughs>
<laughs> Gabe, Bro, I'm sorry. Disney movies. <laughs> I'm sorry. Give it to me. I'm Give sorry, it to Gabe. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Hug it out, guys. Hug it out. Hug it. It's okay, buddy. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right. Well, everybody, we hope you had a good time with the game, and I hope your person won. I wasn't rigging the game against Gabe, I promise. Always taking the L. Always. Check out our midweek content to see how much he loves to lose. Yes. But before that, make sure you check out this message right now. Come to you from Pastor Lewis. We'll see you next week right here for Sports Night at CS Students Online. Peace. Bye, guys. Let's go. Hey, what's up, CF students? Man, welcome back. Tuning in, whether you're watching this from a campus or you're watching this at another time or online or at your house or at work or wherever or whenever you're watching this from, welcome back as we're continuing this series. We are on week two of this series we got going on called Justice for All, man. And you already know Pastor Alex threw it down like he always does, man, just talking about how God is judge, man. And we shouldn't react based on our emotions and how we feel about a certain individual or certain individuals, right? But man, I'm so excited that we continue week two of this series, Justice for All. My name is Lewis and I get to serve as a student director here at our Palmetto Bay campus. And man, let's jump right into it. Let's jump right into it. If you have your Bible, if you got your Bible, I want you to go to Genesis. If you don't know, Genesis is in the middle of the Bible. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. It's the first book of the Bible, okay? Genesis 37, 28 through 36. When you got it, say, I got it. When you got it, say, I got it. Come on. Genesis 37, 28 to 36. It says, then Midianite traders passed by and they drew Joseph. Somebody say Joseph. Joseph up and lifted him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 shekels of silver. They took Joseph to Egypt when Reuben returned to the pit and saw that Joseph. Somebody say Joseph. When they saw that Joseph was not in the pit, he tore his clothes and returned to his brothers and said, man, the boy is gone. And where shall I go? And then they took Joseph's robe and slaughtered the goat and dipped the robe in blood. Dang. That's, ooh, no, no, no. And they sent the robe of many colors and brought it to their father and said this, we have found. Please identify whether it's your son's robe or not. And he identified it and said, it is my son's robe. A fierce animal has devoured him. Joseph is without a doubt torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his garments and put sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son many days. All his sons and all his daughters rose up to comfort him, and he refused to be comforted. And they said, no, I shall go down to Sheol, to my son mourning. Thus his father wept for him. Meanwhile, the Midianites had sold him in Egypt to Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard. Ooh, why are they doing my boy like that, man? Hey, let's take a moment and let's pray. God, we thank you. Give you glory, honor, and praise, God. We thank you that we can all come together here and, and just surround ourselves around your word and lean into your word, God. And I just pray that you may do what only you can do, God. Bring salvation, bring joy, bring peace that surpasses all understanding, God. Bring guidance, Lord. Um, lead us to, where, to, to your will for our lives, God. And I just pray that, man, you even may bring healing throughout this series, God, whether it's to people um, who have done things against us or things who have even, you know, done things against us to this day, Lord, or are plotting things in the future. God, we just pray that you even may bring healing through this series. God, we thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. And can everybody say amen, amen, and amen. Hey, I want you right now, whether you're watching this at a campus or whether you're watching this online, even if you're watching online by yourself, guess what? It's okay, okay? If you're watching online by yourself, Ain't no shame in your game, okay? I watch a ton of things by myself. I cuddle with my dog or something, right? But man, if you're like, if you're like that person in school that you get a ton of good grades, like you're that person that you always get an honor roll, you always get an all of that, I want you to raise your hand, okay? And if you like me, that you ain't never get an honor roll in your life, it's okay, okay? God loves us, <laughs> he's redeemed us. I've gotten an honor roll one time in kindergarten. I think I colored something 
within the lines. I don't know. But, man, it's okay. Hey, if you're that person, you get good grades, raise your hand, raise your hand. Okay, it's good, it's good. Okay, you can put your hand down. If you're a person, um, you can put your hand back down. If you're a person that, man, your mindset is just different. Like, everybody's probably about clothes and sneakers and about wasting money on stupid stuff. And you're like, man, I'm trying to save my money. Like, your mindset is just different on things. But you raise your hand. Like, your perspective is different. You don't think like everybody else does. Raise your hand. You're like, man, everybody focused on these stupid things. I'm trying to focus on Real stuff, like your mind is right, okay? You, you put your hand, okay, you can put, put your hand back down. What about if you're that person that you just attract a lot of attention? Like maybe you're that class clown or you're that person. You just always, man, you got the drip, right? Like you, you pee right there, right? Like, like if that's you, man, I want you to raise your hand. You're like, man, I'm always attracting attention. I'm just loud and ghetto and ratchet for no reason. Uh, every time I step in the room, I'm just, man, everybody know I walked in because I'm wild, okay? If that's you, if you wild, put, put your hand high, okay? And if you are, that's, that's okay. Let me tell you, I'm ghetto, ratchet, and all that good stuff myself, okay? Last thing, what about if you stand for something where you're like, man, I'm a Christian. I love Jesus and I follow Jesus. Like, yeah, y'all want to smoke weed and do all that? I'm sorry. Excuse me. I don't do that stuff. Like, if that's you, I want you to raise your hand. If everybody's out here wilding and they partying and they turning up and you're like, oh, nope. I stand for what I stand for, okay? Like, this is my beliefs. This is what I believe in. This is who I follow. His name is Jesus. I want you to raise your hand, okay? Uh, okay, good, good. I, man, I, my prayer is that everybody raise their hand. If you didn't raise your hand, it's okay. We love you. <laughs> we love you either way. But man, whether whatever it is that you raise your hand for, that you're like, man, I have a different mindset, or I think different than other people, or I always attract attention, or I get good grades. Man, the truth is, you always gonna have haters, bro. Like you always gonna have people that are like, man, this person getting on the roll again. They ain't even that smart. Boy, you better relax. You barely passing this class. <laughs> like, right, right. You just you just get haters for no reason. Let me just put a side note in there. A side note, real quick. Even Jesus had haters, okay? Let's move forward from that. Even, even Jesus had haters, okay? Even though he was doing everything right, he was perfect, and he was awesome, he's amazing, even he had haters. So if you're thinking, man, why they hating on me, brother? Even Jesus had haters, okay? But, man, we, we create these. And, and that kind of what happened with Joseph. See, Joseph had these 11 brothers, right? And, man, the truth is Joseph's dad actually loved him above the rest of them. Isn't that crazy? He was, like, his dad's favorite, okay? Like, and from that, man, even his dad gave him a special coat. He's like, hey, brother, this is just for you, a Gucci coat, right, or a Louis Vuitton coat, whatever the case is. Shout out to Virgil. But he, he gave him a, a, a coat, right, a special coat. And then even God gave a dream to Joseph, and this dream consisted of, of seeing Joseph literally reigning over his brothers like he was going to be their king. They were going to bow down to him. And even one day Joseph's like, hey, he shares the dream with his family. Family, and they're like, brother, who you think you is? Like, bro, God told you, like, relax, brother, relax. You ain't running over nobody, right? And there were so many other things that Joseph, he was just that dude, okay? But, man, even his own family started getting riled up, and they're like, hold on. No, no, this brother doing too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to take him out. So, man, they were plotting to kill him. So what they did was, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take him out. And then one of his brothers named Reuben. Everybody say Reuben. Shout out to Reuben from West Kendall. I love you, brother. But, uh, but Reuben, what he does, he's like, man, I don't think we should kill this dude. Like, I don't, think we, I don't think we should. So what they ended up doing was they threw him in a pit. And as they threw him in a pit, um, the Bible says that, man, his brothers, he, they take him out the pit while, while they see these people passing by. And they say, you know what? Let's just sell this brother, right? So ultimately what happens is he gets sold into slavery by his own family. And then his brother Reuben comes back and says, hey, 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 what, what in the world? Just, what is going on right now? What did y'all do? Oh, we saw... I sold them. Oh, my goodness. So what they do is, as you guys saw in the story we just read, man, they killed an animal and they dipped it in blood. And they went back to the dad and said, hey, brother, we don't know what happened, but apparently he got ate by an animal. He got devoured. So, uh, yeah, rest in peace to my boy. OK, put him on a shirt like like it, he was he was gone. Right. They they made and created this whole fake story. Because of the hatred they had towards him because of who he was, right? He, had, he, he cultivated these enemies when he was just being 
him. Or I don't even think about Joseph right now. I also think about David. Like David was hated. Talk about hated by Saul because David was the one supposed to be king. And Saul was like, no, I want to be king. And he had like anger and jealousy and envy over David. This brother, you know how many times he tried to kill him? Like he was trying to take him out, man. And I look at these two people, David and Joseph, and I'm like, man, that's so relatable, bro. Like it's crazy that for, for Joseph, even his own family, and then for David, it's like, man, somebody that's like, ah, like, man, you you really trying to do me like that, right? Like, as we go throughout our life, it's interesting, it's, it's interesting that, man, the heart of man, man is very wicked, the Bible says. It's desperately wicked. The will of man is very wicked. And, I, and it's crazy that as we go throughout our life and we build relationships, even with relationships with our own family, people hurt us. And people do wrong against us. And people, man, do things of evil against us. And, man, it's insane. Even how Pastor Alex was preaching, he was saying, like, how we shouldn't react on our emotions, how we shouldn't want to be angry and bitter back, and we want to get revenge. And, man, God, take them out or strike them or something. Like, and we get that hatred towards people. And, man, I feel all those emotions because even me in my personal life, like, I remember in middle school, I was bullied all three years um, of my middle school from six to, to eighth great right that's two years brother you don't know what you're talking about okay do your math right you <laughs> know no but even my years of of middle school bro like I was bullied and for me I remember having that anger and that emotion and that hatred just like dang bro like man why they why they doing me like that like they deserve this and they deserve that and they deserve this I don't deserve this I, I shouldn't have to be, man, the th I'm a good dude, bro. Like, I don't bother nobody. I don't have none towards nobody, but they got some towards me. But I love this because look at, look at something that David responded in. Man, shout out to David. David responded like this. Look at what Psalm 138, 7 through 8 says. You see, in the Psalms, I love reading the Psalms because they're so relatable. Like, you just see different emotions and different things that David goes through and how he's sharing his heart to the Lord and his pain to the Lord and his suffering to the Lord and his joyful moments to the Lord. He's always sharing those different emotions. But look, look at what Psalm 138, 7 through 8 says. It says, though I walk in the midst of trouble... You preserve my life. I want you to underline, highlight, screenshot. You preserve my life. You stretch out your hand against the wrath of my enemies and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Oh, that's good right there. See, that word, you preserve my life, it means in Hebrew, not sar. What it means, this is so beautiful. It means that to faithfully watch over something. Faithfully. Like to faithfully watch over something. So what, it's, what, the psalm, what David is saying right there is he's saying, what God does for me is he faithfully watches over me. We can also define that same word is that he faithfully has kept me. He's kept me. You see, I love that even throughout I was bullying and I was going through my life, man, the Lord has kept me. When I wanted to rebel against those who did things towards me, the Lord has kept me. Even when people lied to me, even when people physically abused me, even when people did wrong against me, even when people gossiped about me, even when people created these fake stories about me, the Lord has kept me. The Lord has faithfully watched over me. The Lord has faithfully taken care of me and I want to remind you that maybe you may be in that state of Joseph or of David or of me but I want to encourage you and I want you to lean into this even as hard as it may sound but God is faithfully watching over you God cares for how you're feeling right now and God loves you and has never forsaken you and God is doing more than you even know God is bringing healing in areas in your life you may not even know man I I have this buddy and he's a soldier in the army and when he told me this one time I was like man boom blew my mind he said man uh, what do you usually do at 10 o'clock at night I'm like brother I'm on war zone okay I'm on war zone with my boy Gabe we catching doves straight up you know like me and my boy Gabe you know we catching catching doves every time Christian leaves I don't know what it is we catch a dove shout out to Chris uh, but man he says okay while you're playing video games at 10 o'clock at night I'm out there across the world fighting for you, and you don't even know that. I'm like, oh, brother, why are you, 
Why are you saying that? He's like, yeah, while you're sleeping at 3 a.m. in the morning, I'm on watch, fighting for the country that you live in. And for me, I look at that story and I'm like, man, that's powerful. Because it's the same thing with God. Like we may think, man, God, where you at? God, what you doing? Man, these people hating on me. These people doing against me. These people doing this. But God is doing more than you can even think of. And God is moving in ways that you might not even see right now. But later on, you'll look back and say, man, God is so faithful. Man, God has kept me. Man, God has protected me. Man, I've taken refuge under his wing the same way the psalmist says. Like God has kept me. I want you to tell the person next to you, God is with you, bro. Like, God is with you. Man, these prison lights got me sweating right there. First point is that the Lord has kept you. The Lord has kept you. And the second thing is, I want you to write this down, the second point. Hold on to the hope that things will get better and soon be perfect. Ooh, that's so nice. I'm going to say it twice. Hold on to the hope that things will get better and soon be perfect. I want you to look, look at this scripture. It's Romans 8, 36 to 37. It says, as it is written, for your sake, we're being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. And then look at, look at the response. Like, this is good. This is good. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. What in the world? This is like the most confusing thing I've ever heard in my life. So what it's saying right here is just saying, even though I'm in pain, I'm more than a conqueror? Even though I'm hurting right now because of what somebody else did to me, I'm more than a conqueror? Even though people are talking about me, and even though people are gossiping about me, and even though people are creating lies about me, and even though my own family, my own close friends are doing evil against me, I'm still more than a conqueror? Yes, you are. You're more than a conqueror. And I love that, man, not only did Jesus conquer not just death, but everything else when he went on that cross and he rose from that grave. But, man, he made us more than conquerors, bro. We won. We won. We have the victory because of Jesus. And it may not look like it because of your present, your, your present sufferings. But I love how the scripture says, man, these present sufferings do not amount to the glory that will be revealed to us. This pain we're going through right now, like, it's going to get a lot better. And I love that, man, not only do we talk about, yeah, oh uh, man, heaven is going to be on and popping and we're going to be booming up there. And man, everything's going to be perfect. Everything's going to be awesome. Man, even the psalmist says we will see the Lord in the land of the living. Even here on earth, God just makes life a whole lot better. And we may think from that phrase, oh, you're telling me ain't nothing going to happen to me? No, you can be atheist and things will still happen to you. You can be Buddhist. doesn't matter what you believe in or who you believe in. Life happens to everybody. But I love that we have a hope that not only when the Bible says that when Jesus says, hey, I'm leaving you an advocate, the Holy Spirit. I'm leaving you someone that's going to guide you, that's going to love you, that's never going to forsake you. I'm leaving you me. I'll still be here. When not only am I going to make things better while you're here, there's soon going to come a time where Jesus even says, hey, I'm I'm." I'm leaving, but I'm not really leaving. I'm going to go prepare a place for you, a place called heaven, where things won't be better. They'll be perfect. Like the Holy Spirit is going to walk with us and guide us and love us and never forsake us and lead us here. And things will get so much better in our life. Our perspective will change. The way we view things will change. The way we treat people will change. Even despite how they treat us, the Holy Spirit will start working and doing things in our lives right now. But man, there's another hope. Not that just we have that adversary and that advocate. But man, we have a hope that one day, just one day, that we all will see that everything will be perfect. And that hatred and that hurt and that pain will be completely gone because we'll be with the perfection. 
and the initial point of where we should have been if it wasn't for sin. Dwelling with perfection himself, Jesus. See, I love this clip and I'm ending right here. Man, this is, this is like the clip of clips for me. But man, check out this clip, watch it. Trying to stay with Curry, catches, one dribble, steps back, puts up a three, won't go, rebound tip taken by Spades, final seconds, it's over, it's over. Cleveland is a city of champions once again. The Cavaliers are NBA champions. Cleveland's long sports nightmare has ended. The drought is over. 52 years. Time to celebrate a title. And the emotions for LeBron James, who delivers on his promise to come home and bring a championship to his beloved hometown. Man. That's the clip of clips right there, okay? That's LeBron James, LeBron James himself, right? Like, man, this was when they beat the Warriors, the stack, war like Steph Curry with the shot, boy. Like, that's the greatest shooter of all time. And this is right here where LeBron goes back home to the Cleveland Cavaliers. And, man, he finally gets, catches the dub. Like, he finally wins a championship. I think it was like 52 years that the Cleveland Cavaliers have won their last championship. And and man, finally they're here in this moment. And man, as you guys know, LeBron James is like hectic when it comes to his body and when it comes to his training and when it comes to uh, the people he plays with and his coaching and his coaching staff and all that stuff. And there's a lot of pain, sweat, and tears he went through just for that moment. Just to be in a time to say, hey, we won. We got the victory. As you can see him, he got on his knees. He was crying. And I look at this clip and I, I, I can relate with it so much because I know there's going to come a time in my life where, man, all the pain I went through, all the depression I went through, all the anxiety that I went through, all the hurt that I went through, all the sin that I went through, there's going to come a time where I'm going to be face to face with the one who saved me, with the one who redeemed me, with the one who created with me, the one who redeemed who brought redemption over my life I'm going to be face to face with him one day and everything will be perfect and all my hurt, all my tears all, all the sicknesses, everything will be completely gone and I know, I, I don't know about you but I, I won't be able to stand myself, I'll probably get on my knees, I'll probably be crying I'll probably be like, oh my goodness I'm here all the pain I went through and all the suffering I went through and I'm here and it feels so good to be here and that's the last point is that we have the victory. We got the victory. We won, bro. There's a place for me and a place for you in heaven dwelling with God. Look at this scripture. And this is the last scripture I'm reading, I promise you. It's Romans 8, 18 through 25. It says, for I considered that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. For the creation waits with eager longing for the revealing of the sons of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it and hoped that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to corruption and obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation has been groaning together in the pains of childbirth until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. Look at this. This is good. This is good. For in this hope, we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he sees? But if we have hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Oh, that's good. Let me tell you, bro. There's people I've done wrong against you and there's people I've done evil against you. And maybe you're like, man, I got that bitterness and I got the hatred and I want to get revenge and I want to do this and I want to do that. But let me encourage you, bro. You're more than a conqueror. You're better than that. And... 
Not only did Jesus die on the cross and rose from the grave, but he gave you his Holy Spirit to walk with you, to guide you, to bring healing on you, to do all that good stuff so that you can be better than that, better than the sin you want to do against them back. It's better than that. And you're more than a conqueror. Not only that, but in the end, we win. In the end, we win. Bro, if you're here and you're watching this and you're like, man, I don't, I'm actually, I walk with my head down, man. I don't feel victorious. I actually feel like I'm losing. Like, I actually feel like ain't nothing, ain't nothing for me. This is all my life is about. It's just hurt and pain and it's just this and it's just that. And this is all it feels like. Let me invite you to this man named Jesus. The one who died for you who brought salvation to you, who redeemed your sin, who paid for your sin, but who also sent his spirit to comfort you. And he's also poured his peace on your life. That even though you can walk through these things, bro, you can walk through storms, you can walk through fire, you can walk through things in your life that were meant to destroy you, but you'll actually walk out on the other side like, man, it ain't destroying me, but I grew. It ain't destroying me, but God is faithful. It ain't destroy me, but the Lord has kept me. The Lord has been my shepherd throughout this whole time. It was supposed to take me out, but look at me, strong and mighty, and I'm pushing forward, and, my, and I'm advancing, and I'm elevating, and I'm growing, and it was all because of God who kept me. If that's you and you want to say, Lou, Lou I want to give my life to Jesus. I want everybody right now across our campuses, or if you're watching this online, I want you to close your eyes. Bow your heads. And I want us to lean into this moment. If that's you, all I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to count to three. And I just want you to raise your hand. Ain't nobody looking at you. Not even me. Nobody's looking at you. If that's you on three, I just want you to raise your hand high. It's not to embarrass you. It's not to put you out there. No, no, no. It's a sign of surrender to say, yeah, God, I give you my life. Yes, God, here I surrender right now. If that's you on three. One, God loves you. Two, God has always been with you. He's never, been, he's never forsaken you. There's nothing that can separate his love for you. Three, if that's you, I want you to raise your hand. Raise your hand high. Raise your hand high. Perfect. I'm going to pray, and I want you in your heart. You can repeat after me if you want to. Or you can just, in your own words, it's very short. Watch this. I want you, if that was you that put your hand high, I want you to say, God, I surrender. And God, I believe in you. That simple. God, I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe you died on that cross for my sins. And I believe you rose from that grave to give me eternal life. God, I believe in you. Lord, we thank you for this moment. God, I thank you for those who gave their life to you right now, God. And I pray that you may show them, man, life with you is just so much better. Life with you is just so much more awesome, no matter what we go through. But it's so much better when you're there right there next to us. And God, I pray that as they leave this place, Lord, that they may see your goodness here in the land of the living, Lord, and that they may live and hang on to that hope. That, man, yeah, things are going to get better here, but guess what? There's going to come a day where we'll be face-to-face -face with you and everything will be perfect. God, I thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. See, if students, can we give it up for all those students who gave their life to our God? Man, love you guys. I pray that you guys receive something and that you guys, uh, it encouraged you and lifted your spirit high and all that good stuff. So, man, tune in next week. And if you haven't already seen it, make sure you jump back into week one. Love you, CF students. <laughs>